Uh, is this a video recording? Okay. Um, so for this ranking, I decided to take some inspiration from Chef Rillo's, uh, productions for the rank, for the style of the ranking video. So, uh, I forgot to mention it while recording my bits for the intro, but yeah, go subscribe to him. He's cool. Uh, I've been obsessed with his ranking videos. Like, <clears throat> uh, Funny Tomatoa guy, James is a cool guy, and uh, I uh, think you're a cool guy for watching this video, and I just hope you enjoy it. I, I am exhausted, it is 10, and I still have to render this video. Ah! Okay, so I don't really know how to start this, besides the fact that Cartoon Beatbox Battles is one of the most inspirational YouTube series personally for me. This is when I was trying to move on from object shows like BFDI, mostly because I just kind of grew out of it and wanted to watch something new, which is when I stumbled upon Mario vs. Sonic, which I believe was on YouTube trending. From there, I listened to almost every single Verbal Lace solo there was, as if Verbal Lace was an actual artist on the radio. So I went grocery shopping at a Sam's Club one day and I just went, hmm, I really like these solos. What if I did what Nathaniel Bandy does and ranked them from worst to best? So I did that and the video blew up. Yeah, that was the most shocking surprise to me at the time. Back on the CBB though, this is something that I felt like I got into on my own and I actually had my own interest in it. OSC stuff was primarily stuff that I got into because of my friends. Cartoon beatbox battles is something I had my own passion for and is something that I got to share with people. Granted, cartoon beatbox battles isn't something that I'm into as much as I used to be, but I wholeheartedly still love Ace as a YouTuber and I still respect cartoon beatbox battles so much for inspiring me. That being said, my 2020 ranking is so far the most viewed video on my channel. And I never necessarily followed up on it. Well, truth be told, I was just waiting for CBB Season 1 to come to an end. I was also not really focused on this video as much as I was for other projects, and it took a while to think about my placements. Because believe it or not, my opinions have changed drastically once again. And this ranking is based on only the first season. I'm not necessarily the fondest of the direction Season 2 is going. In fact, I don't like Shadow vs. Vegeta in the slightest. But Cartoon Beatbox Battles means so much to me as a content creator. Now, this was going to be a different kind of ranking as it was originally going to be my last one, but then I remembered that Episode 16 confirmed the possibility of a loser round. And I say possibility because... This is no offense to you, Ace, but the release schedules are so inconsistent for the series that I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up getting canned. So until I hear more from the loser round, this will probably be the last cartoon beatbox battle ranking I'll ever make. Again, this is only going to contain performances from Season 1. So no, I'm not including Shadow, Vegeta, Skipper, nor Dave. But in case you're curious, this is my quick ranking. Like last time, I'm ranking these based off the overall performance. The beatboxing, the lyrics, the visuals, the character representation, and of course, if it sounds good overall. However, unlike my 2020 version, I am not including the remasters unless if they had animated versions. I'm doing this because Cyber vs. Terminator's remaster really isn't that much different compared to the original. Mickey and SpongeBob, on the other hand, are going to have both versions appear on this list. That's because they're completely drastic from each other. Also, since a lot of people thought I put certain beatboxes too low, I decided to make a new ranking system, based on the color you see during the number transition. So, let's get this ranking started. You can't be serious! I was gonna win every battle with you! I don't know if it's a surprise or not that Pikachu's at the bottom, because his suck. I've already ragged on about Pikachu and Grit enough, so I'll keep it brief. This battle just isn't interesting, there's really nothing else to say. The visuals are awful and the performance is overall boring. Pikachu is lower though because there was so much more potential with his character. I don't know, maybe instead of Pikachu we could have gotten Detective Pikachu. I still wouldn't have liked it, but I think it would have been more interesting. Literally the only thing I don't hate about this performance is the beatboxing. I think it's okay. On a side note, I watched the first two Guardians of the Galaxy movies for the first time, and yeah, they're good movies, I like them. I still hate Groot from Cartoon Beatbox Battles. Yeah, surprise, it's not at the bottom anymore. It's still a bad performance. Literally everything I just said about Pikachu, I could say the same thing for Groot, only I do think this fits his character a lot more. And the visuals don't look as bad as Pikachu's. It still sucks, but hey, it's better than Rock Bottom, I guess. Who do you work for, DreamWorks? Answer me. I'm like the only person on planet Earth that actually likes Mickey's first performance. I know, it's super weird, but 
I don't know, I just find it really charming. It's extremely weak and basic, but at the same time, I don't know, that's just kind of why I like it. It's so charming. But it is the first performance, and it's really weak compared to everything else afterwards. Mickey's one roast isn't really that good either. I have bronchitis! Just like Mickey, I love the episode 1 charm so much that I cannot put it any lower. But this performance itself, for the lack of a better term, is more fun. And it fully takes advantage over Spongebob's natural cartoon abilities. I really want to put this one high Higher, but I know there's better options out there. I don't know what that says about, about us as phantom thieves. Joker is a performance that I've been extremely mixed upon for the past few years. On one hand, I like the roast, the beatboxing, and I think that it does fit his character really well. But the flow is really inconsistent a lot, so it happens to sound really really weird at points. The ending is definitely the worst indicator of this as you can just hear the clickings back and forth and back and forth and uh, it just doesn't sound right. Joker in my opinion is a huge mixed bag but I do think it's better than the others on an objective level. Well I like to call it the caboose. So I think Goofy's is okay. Like Mickey I used to see this one constantly ranked bottom and I certainly don't agree. The beatboxing is pretty good and I'd argue that the visuals are just as good if not better than Patrick's. But uh... In my opinion, I'm not the biggest fan of the flow. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's solid, it's not a bad flow, but... I don't like Goofy doing Eminem. I'm sorry, it just doesn't sound right. Not to mention Goofy has like one roast throughout the performance. And yes, I know Patrick has that issue too, but here's the thing. Firstly, Patrick had more to say in the beginning of his performance. While Goofy starts off with his first four lines and... Yeah, that's kind of the whole beatbox. And secondly, Patrick's performance is more true to his character than Goofy's is to his. I'm not saying that either of them are out of character in their performances, but Goofy's performance does have worse representation of his character in his. But even with all that, Goofy's is okay, just nothing more than that. Hi, Georgie. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with y'all, Pennywise is my favorite character in Cartoon Beatbox Battles. Yeah, I know, it's really weird. I know everybody was assuming that Sonic would be my favorite because, well, Sonic the Hedgehog is my favorite character in all of fictional media. But I don't know, I just love seeing Pennywise's interactions and his performances always blow me away. And his first performance against Joker is really no exception to that. I actually really like Pennywise's flow here. It's really catchy to me. It's repetitive, yeah, but it's meant to be more intimidating. Something that I feel really fits Pennywise's character in my opinion. The visuals overall look pretty nice, even if this is the old animation style, which I went on record saying that I'm not a big fan of. Although it could be a lot better in the roast department, I overall still think Pennywise has a very solid beginner's performance. Lollipops. Chainsaws. Lollipops. Chainsaws. Lollipops. You know what? We'll give them one of each. If I was ranking the original Cyborg vs. Terminator, Terminator's original would definitely be towards the bottom. I'm sorry, but without music, this performance is absolutely dreadful. Thankfully, I'm not counting that version and counting the remaster. It sounds fine. I think the instrumental is fantastic, and I think it really helps out with the flow. But despite that, the roasts are terrible. Okay, that might be an over-exaggeration since I haven't really seen the Terminator movies, but these disses are extremely unremarkable except for the fact that he tells Cyborg that he's never going to poop again, and then he turns him into a toilet, and uh, I don't get it. I'm also not the biggest fan of the uh, 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 I I get the point of it, I get what it's referencing, but I don't know, it sounds a little weird, honestly. <laughs> But the category with the biggest mixed bag is definitely the visuals. I think the visuals itself look good, but you can definitely tell when they cut corners. I'm not even going to be nice about this because good lord Cyborg's reaction shots are some of the worst things I've seen in the modern CBB art style and I've been thinking about this ever since this video came out. It's not all bad, but it's definitely the biggest mixed bag in this whole ranking. Oh, you're not going to see Mickey Mouse. Why, dang? Because he doesn't exist. <laughs> I know people like this performance, and if I say anything bad about it, I know people are going to get on me anyways, but I'm sorry I don't like Gert too. Don't get me wrong, it was so much better than her performance. Did I just say her? <laughs> it was a lot better than his performance in episode 2, but that's like comparing Arby's to something like King in and out I think Groot was robbed, definitely, but that doesn't mean I thought he won. Ace did the best he can with Groot, but I just think Groot is a fun to let fun to fundamentally flawed character. <laughs> See, this is the type of sh that happens when you're dyslexic. So, as much as I appreciate what Ace did to expand upon his character in this series, I just think Groot was so incapable of winning that he was doomed from the start. Just like what I said almost three years ago, yeah, comfortably and easily the worst round two in the series. This is the last time! The last goddamn time! Well, would you look at that, yet another controversial take of me saying that Mario's is just decent. 
just so people don't go twisting my word again, let me reiterate. Mario's is fine. I still do think that the autotune clashes with his accent way too much, to the point where one could find it hard to understand him. The reason I bring this up so much is because everybody said this about Sonic 2, but Mario gets a pass for it. But with Sonic 2, the visuals at least provided some context for me to understand what he was getting at. Meanwhile, Mario's roasts were extremely vague and the visuals didn't help that much. I still don't understand what he's talking about in this part. I know what he says, he says you got speed but you're really slow so it's not gonna save you, but what the hell is he talking about? I just think that these roasts are extremely basic and at times subpar. That being said, I like just about everything else. As inconsistent as it is, I do think the visuals look pretty neat, the instrumental is good, and the beatboxing is great. Again, this is a B tier performance. It's solid, but it has its flaws. So no, I don't hate Mario. Your precious patties on my feet. Patrick is another character in the series that I feel has really consistently good performances. Like Pennywise, it may be lacking in roast, but the beatboxing is fantastic in this one. The visuals here are also really neat, conveying Patrick's stupidity and his emotions. But as we'll later see, we see this concept expanded to its maximum in its later performances. <laughs> Compared to Terminator, Cyborg's remaster is not that much of an improvement, but that's because I always thought the beatbox itself was good. I don't even know how this is possible, but I just think Bad by Michael Jackson was a perfect fit for him. The beatbox itself is just so smooth and has an amazing rhythm to it. This one is just so great to vibe to, I really like this one. It's not perfect, but the visuals are good, the beatboxing's great, and the lyrics are fairly solid. You like that little throwback? Oh yeah, Thanos 2 kinda sucks. Nah, I'm joking. I think Thanos 2 is actually pretty underrated. I can see why many people were disappointed by Thanos' second round, but personally, I just found it a jam. I will admit though that the chorus goes on for way too long to the point where it comes off as a bit repetitive, and Thanos' character was extremely toned down since he's facing Patrick. But if you look at Thanos 2 on its own, then you'll find that it's actually a pretty solid performance. Just could have been better for one of CBB's most popular characters. Come on, let's play. Let's go climb a tree. Da be da do. Shemona, Shemona. All right, my boy Pennywise is going up next. Let's see what he's got. God damn it! Yeah, I'ma be honest with y'all when I say that I found Pennywise 3 extremely disappointing at first. But in retrospective, I think there's actually a lot to like about this performance. I think what Ace tried to do with Pennywise is just try to be more experimental with him. Instead of trying to make his performance intimidating and creepy, they tried to give him more of a Halloween party-like vibe. And while I definitely don't prefer it, I still think that the beatbox itself is really fun to listen to. I don't know what it is about this performance in particular, but I think this has the best lighting and shading. Just look at the zombies at the end, they look spectacular. This is also the first time where Pennywise actually makes roast in his performance, and I think I understand why Ace doesn't roast with him usually because his roasts in this performance are not the greatest. His roasts just boil down to Patrick is stupid and he smells like crap. Oh, and SpongeBob is his girlfriend, ha ha ha. Like Thanos, I do like Pennywise 3, but we've seen him do better. I can't hear you! It's too dark in here! Darkseid's beatbox is a genuine banger and I'm tired of pretending it's not. Darkseid's has a vibe similar to Pennywise in a way. It's intimidating, chilling, and has a really good beat. Not to mention the impressive beatboxing and really good roasts. But I will say that the ending is fairly underwhelming. I don't know, without the buildup, I was expecting a little bit more. Though even with that, I still think Darkseid deserves a fair amount of recognition. Up in here, up in here. I mean... Is there anything else to say about Thanos 1 that hasn't already been said? Don't get me wrong, I agree that the memes have completely oversaturated this performance, but I don't think it should hinder my enjoyment of the performance overall. So much just happens in Thanos 1 that there's just so much to really say that I think everyone's already said it. It's extremely overwhelming with how hard it goes. And Thanos is not playing around, he wants Darkseid dead. I didn't put this any higher because this is just not my preferable music taste. Nothing against Thanos 1 by the way, I just vibe with other performances is all. This will always be seen as a fan favorite performance and I could completely understand why. I've been meaning to, to tell you something, uh... Shut up you stupid- You know what's really funny? In my old ranking from 2019, I had Sonic as my number one favorite performance in the whole show. 
and in 2020, his first solo was ranked number 7, and his second solo was ranked number 2. So while his second solo is still in my top 10, his first solo isn't even in the top 15. But that is not to say that Sonic 1 has aged like milk. The best part about this performance is easily Sonic's portrayal. Sonic in this performance is an absolute douchebag. That's how the 90s portrayed him, especially towards Mario. So I'm glad Ace really took note of that, and I think that Sonic 1 did a better portrayal of his character than Sonic 2. Though in Sonic 2, he literally went up against someone he didn't know as opposed to his actual rival, so I guess that makes sense. Although I think Mario had better roasts in the dialogue portions, when it comes to the actual beatbox roasts, nah, Sonic wiped the floor with him, I'm sorry. I mean, the part where he takes Princess Peach from the castle to prove a point to Mario was so funny and so clever. It was funny in Black Panther 2 as well, don't get me wrong, but it just didn't really make a lot of sense. And of course, there's the part where Sonic goes supersonic, and I'll be honest, I find Sonic's voice to be a little bit annoying in this portion, hence to why it's not as high. Even with that, this performance is still really good, just it got knocked down by a lot of competition and I do have a few nitpicks with it. I farted. <laughs> well then, if the Mario tape doesn't get me killed, then I think this will. I think Black Panther 3 is overrated. Okay, now that you've distanced yourself from me, I can now explain myself. I've debated so much on where I should put Black Panther round 3, and honestly, I think this is the perfect spot. Just like Pennywise, I was decently disappointed with this performance given how I loved his first two rounds. I'd argue that Black Panther's was actually more disappointing than Pennywise's because at least with Pennywise he had his first round that could be considered worse than his third. But to me at least, Black Panther's first round was genuinely phenomenal, and then Black Panther 3's is just... It's, it's good, but not fantastic. Okay, enough with the negative. This performance is still genuinely great. His roles range from somewhat basic to pretty good. The beatboxing and visuals are great, and I will say that the vibe of the Black Panther performances is still there. But riddle me this. Why is it that every time there's a final episode of each round, why is it that the competitor who goes first raises their auto-tune settings to 92 and they become hard to understand? This is an exaggeration, of course, but there were times when I watched Black Panther 3 for the first time and I did not understand a single thing he said. And look, I don't want to be a Dibby Downer, but god, the instrumental is boring! And I think that's exactly what made this performance so forgettable to me at first. Like I said, the old school Black Panther vibe is still there, just it's not as prominent. But I will say that the ending is great and it's really creative. It's easily the highlight of the whole performance. Overall, it really hurts me to say that this is probably T'Challa's weakest performance. But if your worst performance is still an A-tier performance, that proves how much of a great competitor you are. And it is super serious, right babe? Of course it's serious. Yeah. Got room for just one dude. Whoa. Out of all the round ones, I definitely say that Batman's gets better the more I rewatch it. My only real issue is that it's sometimes a little bit all over the place. Like, there's this part where it goes super fast and it's like, Whoa, slow it down a bit, Batman. You're not Sonic. I mean, hard metal really isn't my thing, but I am more than willing to make exceptions. I think Batman's edge and the way he embraces himself is just so in character. It's amazing. And I know you're probably going to ask, Well, what about Robin? Didn't you have a problem with him before? Yeah, I had a problem with his voice and how much he took up the beat. Box. I know he sounds similar to Sonic and Deadpool, but you gotta remember, I'm not a comic book fan, so seeing Robin with that kind of voice when my only exposure to Robin's character is Teen Titans, it sounded really jarring to me. And yeah, I still don't like how much screen time he takes up, but I'm willing to look past it since he actually contributes to Batman's character. In my opinion, an extremely solid and underrated round one. And why aren't you in uniform? <laughs> Do you want to know what the first major change in my list was? Spongebob 2 not even being in the top 10 anymore. I used to love Spongebob 2, and to an extent, I still do. The more I revisit Spongebob 2, the more I realize, yeah, Spongebob's roasts are really weak. I think Ace said himself best that Spongebob was not going to win in the roast department, and yeah, I could definitely see that now. Especially when the poor guy was going up against Deadpool of all people. But that does not change the fact that Spongebob 2 just has so much of that Spongebob charm. He's a goofy goober and he's rocking that with style. Oopa Spongebob style. And this is the part where I gush about the Doodle Bob ending, but I think you've already heard me gush about that enough. It's great, there's nothing much else for me to say. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. But surprisingly, although I like Deadpool's performances, I don't think he's won either round. It's interesting to see how much can change in so little time. 
On that note, I think Deadshot lost now. Don't get me wrong, I love the intimidating vibe of it, and the roasts are really, really good. Not to mention great visuals and that amazing ending. But it just doesn't stand out as much compared to the others. It's the most average A tier performance within the series. There may be better ones out there, but Deadshot still did great. They're not gonna know you didn't like Black Panther. It was a tough choice to put either Black Panther 1 or Black Panther 3 at the spot, but I think Black Panther 1 is just so much more memorable. It's so smooth and it has such a great rhythm to it. Not to mention that this performance itself is extremely unique, as it's the only performance in the series to ever do two songs at once. In which being Smooth Criminal by Michael Jackson and California Love by Tupac. Yeah, I love Black Panther Round 1, it's so good. Said a fantastic introduction to one of my favorite CBB characters. Sweet baby Jesus. You know, in retrospective, it's so weird to hear me say that I think Deadpool lost at one point when I consider his the best round one. No joke, I legit forgot how catchy this one is. Not to mention, this is definitely the best Deadpool's character has been represented in cartoon beatbox battles. He's not holding anything back, he's going to town, he is making all the innuendos, pop culture references, and the roasts. This performance is just Deadpool being purely Deadpool and nothing else. And it is so fun to watch. Is dubstep still a thing? I used to think that Deadpool 2 was weaker than Deadpool 1, but honestly, I think they're both on the same level. I just think Deadpool 2 is just so much more of a vibe and just clicks with me more. Like Thanos, Deadpool was toned down a little bit because he's facing a Spongebob character. But with Deadpool, I don't mind it because Deadpool is still, well, Deadpool. He's still goofy, dirty, and has so much up his sleeve. Deadpool's such an entertaining character in the series that even when he's lacking, he still puts on an amazing show. His performances are just so much fun to watch that it makes me crack a smile. I also think Lady Death and Domino serve as really good background vocals. And for as jazzy as it is, I love the ending. It's so badass. Yeah, I love being purple! You know what I didn't expect when going into this list? I was genuinely surprised to find out that I put 3 out of Patrick's 4 solos in the top 10. I swear it was not intentional. Nonetheless, Patrick 2 is such a vibe, man. Patrick round 2... Did I- I said tune again, what the fu- Patrick 2 manages to be so upbeat, chill, disgusting, and charming at the same time. You could tell from the get-go that Patrick is not taking this competition seriously, as he's just pointing out the most random things he sees and- it, it works! He's just so oblivious to the fact that Thanos just wants to murder him. He's just going with the flow and having a really fun time with his performance, indicated by the really chilling and catchy beat. Even when he gets his mouth snapped off, he automatically just keeps going, literally using his derriere and his back to beatbox. I tell you, this man is unstoppable. The fact that Thanos of all characters lost to Patrick Star farting is the funniest thing to me. Mickey's remaster is absolutely insane. So much happens, yet so little is said. Normally I would find this a problem like the episode 2 beatboxes, but here Mickey's still roasting and constantly boasting about how much he has. My favorite part of the whole performance is just the creativity of it with Mickey buying out every studio including Nickelodeon. Despite Viacom already owning Nickelodeon, but we could ignore that. The only issue with this one is that it's really lacking in its lyrics. Mostly the roast, because even with the visuals, Mickey doesn't really roast Spongebob that much. And it's mostly just the same old, I'm gonna buy out your company, Spongebob! <laughs> but this is not the same performance we got back in 2016. Not by a long shot. It has a really good rhythm to it, has nice beatboxing, and have I mentioned the visuals yet? Because good lord, they look beautiful. You could tell that the animators at least had some experience working on a Mickey Mouse project. He looks so accurate, and there's just so many nice callbacks to other Mickey Mouse media. And being a big Disney fan throughout my entire life, this was nice to see. Really happy we got to see Mickey again. Hi, my name is SpongeBob. But like the original, I think SpongeBob took the win against Mickey. Though, it's really, really equal this time. It's similar to Mickey's to how it's pretty basic for a remaster, but at the same time, it's visually amazing. I just like Spongebob's callbacks more within the visuals, and I also think that the performance itself is a lot more expressive, lively, and really wacky. It's just overall so much more charming, and that's why I think he won. I also think Spongebob just has better beatboxing slightly. Just the way it starts and the way it ends, it just sounds so great. I love it. <laughs> What? The real one? What? 
Sonic 2 may not be my personal favorite anymore, but I still absolutely adore it. And yeah, I know it's somewhat hard to understand what he's saying because of the autotune, but honestly, I never had that issue, at least not to the extent as everyone else. That's because the visuals are not only super helpful, but they're just so, so lively and great. I mean, Sonic just looks a million times better in a second performance. Like, look at how he looks in his round one. He looks like dog shit. Seriously, the only time he looked good in that episode is when he was traced. Despite the fact that Sonic had more merit in his first performance, he's just, he's just vibing. I love that. Again, it just feels like he's just going with the flow and having fun. And I tell you, this is the most I've smiled throughout a CBB performance. You gotta remember, this came out in 2020, where there was a giant Sonic the Hedgehog drought. The only officially released pieces of Sonic media that was worth excite- <laughs> I've took it this like 15 times. I can't do this. The comics and the movies were basically the only cool things around this time. And even then, I don't think everyone was into those. But then this performance came along and it reminded me why I love Sonic to begin with. The memorable music, the characters, and of course, the creativity within the series, such as the Werehog. I still think Black Panther won, but hey, Sonic 2 still means a lot to me. We should take Bikini Bottom and push it somewhere else! I used to strongly dislike Patrick 3 when it first released. But then I rewatched it a few more times and then I realized it was one of my favorite performances the whole series has ever made. It's just Patrick 2 again, but it's a lot more fun. It's a lot more funny, clever, charming, catchy. It, it just has better everything. This is the pure definition of an earworm. It's so catchy. And in my opinion, this definitely has one of the best instrumentals in the entire show. And I especially love how it clutches with Patrick's little da da do da do da da do da do. And it plays throughout the entirety of the performance, and that's just such a nice little detail. I know Ace does this with every performance, but I think that this is the first that made me realize that. Not to mention, this is definitely one of the first performances to have 8D audio. And probably one of the only ones, because for some reason the newer episodes have really bad audio rendering. But that's besides the point. I just think Patrick 3 is one of those performances that just gets better with age. Uh, hey, this is Future Editing Hatman here. I meant to add in this portion later, but uh, yeah, I don't like the part where Patrick takes a dookie. That actually made me cringe when I first watched the episode, I'm gonna be honest. Ah! Right up Main Street! Deadpool 3 is so damn rad, dude. I absolutely love it. But okay, I'm gonna address the elephant in the room. I am tired of all the Spongebob jokes. We get it, Ace. You think Spongebob's overrated. But anywho, I think Deadpool 3 is phenomenal. It is so ridiculous, but it is oh so satisfying to listen to. I just love how upbeat it is. And I think Deadpool's vocals match so, so great with the instrumental, which in my opinion is the best instrumental in cartoon beatbox battles. Though I will say it is definitely Deadpool's weakest performance in terms of his roast. Besides that though, it is a 9 out of 10 across the board. This is definitely the performance that made me realize how much I love Deadpool's performances and Deadpool as a character. Easy top tier performance. We've gone from boys to men and now there's only one direction for us to go. The back streets. I could just say Black Panther 2 is amazing and call it a day. In which I'm going to do that. Pedro Pony. Nah, I'm messing with you. I'm still going to talk about it. I think this is definitely where cartoon beatbox battles peaked. Let alone where Black Panther peaked. This performance is perfect. It has great references, great roasts, fits in with Black Panther's character and the whole shebang. And can I just mention that this performance is ungodly memorable? There's so much to love about this performance that I cannot put into words. There is a rare chance you'll find a CBB fan who does not like this performance. It's like trying to find someone who actively dislikes Spirited Away. I better hop. But you can never go wrong with Black Panther 2. That being said, there are three performances I do like more. Pedro Pony! He's a clown! <laughs> <laughs> now this is where the show really peaks. I'm gonna make this portion brief since I've already talked about it two times already, so I don't want to sound redundant. Pennywise's haunting and intimidating creepy nature is put on full display in this performance. He's threatening to murder a baby. Plant. And the way he torments and manipulates Groot, especially at the ending portion, this really goes to show how extraordinary the round twos really were. Pennywise 2 is the reason why Pennywise is my favorite character in this series. I completely understand if one would find it to not be their thing, and to an extent, it's not fully my thing either. But this is my favorite round 2 just because of how experimental, creepy, interesting, and how much effort was put into this. Not only the animation, but the beatboxing as well. I love you, Pennywise. Wait, hold up. So, we're finally at the top 2. 
I'm going to be honest with you guys. This was probably the hardest decision to make throughout this entire list. And I know what I'm about to say is probably going to come off as extremely controversial, but here we go. So you might have noticed a pattern at this point that I actually agree with every single winner in cartoon beatbox battles right now. All except for one. And that's ironically enough, the final episode. Deadpool vs. Patrick. So who ended up winning I hear you ask? Well honestly, I have no clue. In the epilogue episode we see Ace giving Patrick the trophy, but he then backpedaled and said that Deadpool won on Discord. So who did I think won the finale? Honestly, neither of them. <gasps> I thought the whole thing was a tie from the beginning. But let's actually analyze the battle, starting with Patrick. It's another Patrick solo. It's really charming, really funny, and it has an overall really nice melody to it. Again, it's just Patrick being Patrick. But he's showing a lot more confidence this time because he already went up against the deadliest of opponents. And I will say the pacing is pretty different, and I think it's a really nice change for his final performance. And while his roasts are dumb, it fits his character, and it actually kind of works. And that ending is so simple, but adds so much value to this performance. It's a perfect way to cap off Patrick record in CBB, the record of a lovable pink underdog. As for the other side of the coin, we have Deadpool 4. And let me tell you this right now, that before this episode came out, that I have grown to love Deadpool's performances. Then he just does a freaking Eminem rap song out of nowhere, and it's like, what? I'm over here expecting another Deadpool 3 or Deadpool 2, and like, no, we just get something akin to something like Rap God. This performance is a trip. There's so many callbacks, references, and the best rap I've heard in this series. This takes everything that was so great about Deadpool's previous rounds and combine it into one and expand upon those features. The rapping from Deadpool 1, the childish but funny humor from Deadpool 2, the ungodly instrumental from Deadpool 3, and the Deadpool charm from every single performance including this one. So while I deeply apologize that this comes off as a cop-out, but I really couldn't decide which one was the best. I think both Deadpool and Patrick Round 4 were both the best ways to close out CBB Season 1, and honestly, that's why they are both tied for number 1. So thank you guys for watching this ranking video, I really appreciate it. The actual ranking video is over now, but if you want to stay to hear the extra message at the end, then uh, that would make me really happy actually. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to sound a little cheesy here for a moment, but I really want to thank all of you guys. And I'm not just talking about the people watching this video, I mean everybody. This entire journey with Cartoon Beatbox Battles means so much to me. It's it's a silly little cartoon beatboxing series, yeah, on the surface, but the series itself means so much to me. I mean, without cartoon beatbox battles, I don't think I would have gotten into Guardians of the Galaxy or even horror movies if it wasn't for Pennywise. And like I said before, it reignited my love for the Sonic the Hedgehog series with Sonic 2. Not only that, but it also expanded my love for music. Not to mention it also reignited my love for voice acting and even animation. I know it's a little silly to talk about this in retrospect, about a series about characters beatboxing against each other and rapping at the same time and having that be a big inspiration for stuff you're into now but it's the truth and quite honestly i also got amazing opportunities because of this series and because of the ranking videos i mean with the ranking videos we got to 10k which i didn't really expect my 11 year old self to really make it that far when first starting this channel like Almost 10 years ago, oh my gosh. I actually got to meet Verbal Ace himself within Discord calls and even got a freaking Verbal Ace plushie signed by him. And Ace himself is not a perfect individual, I'm not pretending he is, but man, he's made a great impact on my life. Not just as a content creator, but in my social life in general. So thank you to Verbal Ace for making the series. Thank you to all the animators for animating the series and bringing it to life. And thank you for the viewers for watching not only Verbal Ace's content, but watching mine as well. So while this might mark the end for the Cartoon Beatbox Battles content on this channel, I still hope you stay around. But if you don't want to, that's perfectly fine, and I appreciate you even stopping by. As always, keep on being happy, Super Hat fans.